Hello class. So I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic, so I thought it might be kind of fun to do it the old-fashioned way on a whiteboard. So first of all, let me just make it really clear that we are right at the end of the trimester, all right? So you've got an asynchronous day today, you've got an asynchronous day next week, but that's it. So you are definitely going to want to make sure you prioritize getting caught up in all your classes and passing, all right? So please let me know today if there's any way that I can help you. Uh, send me an email, send me a text, whatever you gotta do to get a hold of me so that I can make sure that you are passing. So let's all go ahead right. and take a look at this example here. If I have two plus one y is equal to three, and I have three x plus four y is equal to eight. Okay, this is my system. Okay, fun fact. Uh, my geometry teacher was really, or, well, okay, geometry and algebra too. Anyway, she was really good at making those brackets. I always wished I could be as good as her. I practiced. That's the best I've got, guys. So, um, working on becoming the best math teacher ever. Not quite at her level yet. All right. So, looking at this, which colors? The key thing here is I've got this two and this three, right? And I've got this eleven and this four. All right. Those numbers should stand out to you. Okay, so what would I have to multiply the top equation by in order to make them opposites? What would I have to multiply the bottom equation by to make them opposites? <clears throat> you can kind of see that if I multiply 4 times 11 and 11 times 4, I'm going to end up with 44y and a negative, right? And you have to have a negative on one of those, negative 44y. Those would cancel out. So on the other hand, I want to make 2 and 3 match. What would I have to multiply those by? Right? Okay, so obviously you can, you can kind of imagine that the 2x and 3x would be the better choice of the two. I'm going to look and say, okay, well, I know the 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. Because they're prime numbers, I just have to multiply them by each other. And it's gonna, I'm going to multiply this equation by a 3 and this equation by, actually, let's go negative 3 and positive 2. Or, you know what's really cool about whiteboards? You can erase stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a negative 6. Okay, negative 3 times 11 is going to be a negative 33. And then uh, 3 times negative 3, that's going to be a positive number. Okay, so you can see I ended up introducing a negative here, but taking one away from here. We'll call that a win. Okay, now I'm going to multiply all of these by a 2. I don't have to change the signs. I can cancel. And so using what we're calling Isabel's rule, I'm going to line through these because they cancel. I'm going to draw a line underneath because now I know I'm adding everything else together. Here we're looking at negative 33 plus 8, or you could look at it as 8 minus 33. Either way, we're going to end up with a negative as our final answer. 5y is equal to 16 plus 9. I can do that in my head. That's 25. So now I can divide both of these by negative 5. And this is going to give me a y that's equal to a negative 5, right? OK, so once I know what y is, I can plug that into one of the two equations. Equation. Let's go back to uh, this one. I had the 3 times x plus 4 times y is equal to 8. So now I can go ahead and multiply it. 3x minus 20 equals 8. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. This is giving me 28. That can't be right, can it? All right. And so after checking it out, I realized I made a mistake. Okay, so I had a rule last year that if I made a mistake while teaching math, I would do 10 push-ups. Uh, no doubt some of you caught on to this already, but 33 minus 8 is not 5, right? I forgot to bring down the... So I'm going to change that to a 2, which gives me negative 25y. I'm going to change that to a 2. We're dividing by 25, and you can see now we get a value of negative 1 instead of negative 5, all right? Much happier for our final result, which does mean that fraction's incorrect. Let's go back over here. Now I change this to a 1. All right, so that's going to be 4 times 1, which is going to give you a 4, negative 1. So that's going to give me a negative 4. Is that another mistake? Uh, negative 1. Right, get it right, Mr. Moore, get it right. So now I'm going to add 4 to a marker that works. I'm going to add 4 to both sides, which is going to give me 8 plus 4, which it is indeed finally a multiple of 12. All right? <laughs> so from here, 12 divided by 3, that's going to give me 4 comma negative 1. All right. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to project this on the screen so you can see it. So just look right there while I'm writing, okay? Or reading, I should say. We're looking at a situation with Scott 
bought five footballs and returned two basketballs. Okay, so say that maybe you start football season during basketball season. Realize that you have too many of one thing, you gotta get rid of it. Scott bought five footballs and returned two basketballs and paid a total of $124. Nicole bought three footballs and returned four basketballs and paid a total of $24. The system of equations models this situation where F is the price of footballs and B is the price of basketball. How much does each football and basketball cost? All right, so here we have this situation. It's not a whole lot unlike the Jason the Bag example that we dealt with last week. And now I'm going to make everything bigger. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. We're looking at a little bit bigger and now, once again, I'm going to look and say, all right, I've got two possibilities. I've got those ones and I've got those ones. And I'm going to say, all right, should I make this one on the left side match, I make the X's, or not the X's, the F's cancel out, or should I make the B's cancel out? That's, that's my first question. So obviously, th this is how I always think about this in my mind, by the way, because I think about like common denominators. If I was adding one fifth to one third, I would have to look and say, oh, I gotta make those 15, right? So that means I have to make these 15. So you can see that's definitely gonna be a lot easier. Negative two, negative four. So let's go ahead and go with that one. And that's gonna give me a four that I need to make this to match, okay? Now, I don't want them to match, I actually want them to be opposites. So instead, I'm gonna to need to multiply one of these. Let me take a moment to think about exactly what this means, all right? I know that if you buy five footballs and you return two basketballs, you'll end up with a total of $124, okay? So that means if I double it, if I double the order, I'm going to buy 10 footballs and return four basketballs and that's gonna cost me $248, right? So again, I'm doubling the order, so that's gonna double the worth, and that's gonna make the amount of basketballs that are returned exactly the same. So if I look at this and I say, all right, um, I'm gonna multiply this entire equation from here to here by a negative two, all right, okay? So once again, just to explain what this means is that I said, all right, what if I double the order? Okay, well if I double the order, I double the amount it costs. So that's where this is actually supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> 248. Now it's frustrating that I did that in my head a second ago, and that was just fine, but I just made that mistake, so now I gotta... By the way, if anybody knows who's sane, show them this video, okay? <laughs> he used to be responsible for more push-ups last year than I don't than like anybody. All right. <laughs> So if I double the order, I end up with it costing 248. Here we're saying, all right, well, what if instead I returned 10 footballs and bought four basketballs, right? In that case, I would have gotten $248 back. So the cool thing about that is now I can look and say, no, if Scott bought as many basketballs as Nicole returned, suddenly we can balance the budget and get rid of some things. So once again, I'm going to apply Isabel's rule here line through, line under, and I'm gonna add everything else together, okay? So we can find out that actually, if you buy, that's a dead marker. If, if you sell seven footballs, that's also a dead marker. If you return seven footballs, um, you're going to make, let's see, how much money per football? So this is gonna be an eight comes down, the uh, four two comes down and a two comes down. And that's still, oh, come on. Are you serious right now? All right, so I figured it out. So I'm gonna <laughs> go to 24 over here. The moral of the story today is definitely gotta be, uh, <laughs> you learn through making mistakes, right? If I look, this is gonna be a four. This is gonna be a two this is gonna be a two, and it's gonna stay negative. So I'm actually left with negative 224. So here we divide by negative seven, and F is equal to 30. You buy a football for $32. Um, you see the diminishing returns here, right? I make more mistakes the more push-ups I do, so I end up doing more push-ups. Anyway, <laughs> now I can plug that into one of the original equations. So this is gonna be uh, three times $32. So Nicole bought or three footballs and returned four basketballs, okay, for $24. All right, so now that I know that the footballs are $32, this makes the rest of the math pretty easy. Three times 32 is minus 4b equals 24. Subtract 96 
So from both sides, okay, 72, or actually a negative 72, right? Okay, minus 4b. Now I can divide this by negative 4. Negative 4. We find out that basketballs, basketballs right here, are worth 18. Okay, and there you go. That's how much a football costs. That's how much a basketball costs in this scenario. That's what I have for you today. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. Again, take advantage of today. Get your work turned in. We've only got a couple of weeks left to make this count. See you later.